Daniel Larson, a homeless man who roams the streets of Denver, Colorado. His insanity absolutely knows no bounds, and every second of his life, relentless trolls destroy his mental state. Every night that Daniel's on the streets, his mental state deteriorates quicker than an abandoned building rotting with mold. Welcome to Daniel's Denial, a documentary series covering the life and times of Daniel Robert Larson. The last we heard from Daniel Larson, he was rotting away in jail after skipping court in favor of fake college courses. Said fake college courses were constructed by management in what is regarded as one of the best trolls in Larsonian history. Imitating UCLA, a prestigious university in Los Angeles, California, the trolls managed to convince Daniel that he was really attending. They taught him about the wonders of the fictional land of ancient Texas, giants and giantism, famous Disney movies, and many other things. Daniel took this course with such priority over his legal woes that he ended up in jail over it. From a fellow inmate who allegedly Daniel was in jail to his inevitable release, this is the jail arc. On February 3rd, 2024, Daniel Larson was arrested for being a fugitive of justice. Prior to this arrest, he started a live stream in which he'd walked around, paranoid about cop cars he spotted in the area being there for him. Many chalked this up to his schizophrenia making him paranoid of the nearby police officers. He eventually entered the Aurora Mall and sat down. Police went inside and immediately apprehended him. It was revealed that the Aurora Police Department had actually been notified of the prior threats Daniel had made to a hospital, among other things. As such, the police took this seriously and arrested him. He was booked into Arapahoe County Jail after failing to attend court multiple times. His bail was set at $20,000. Many people in the community believed wholeheartedly that Daniel was truly done for this time, as he had never had such a high bond before and his phone was also allegedly taken in as evidence, suggesting that more charges could be pressed onto Daniel due to illegal content on it. On February 5th, an individual named Daniel Larson went on trial, and said trial was live-streamed. Whether it was Daniel or not was in question, as there were multiple inmates by the name of Daniel Larson in the jail system at the time, and nobody saw the individual in question's face, but many speculated that the individual was a different Daniel Larson, due to this hearing taking place in Boulder County whilst Daniel was in Arapahoe. Nonetheless, the stream was shut down because of trolls flooding it with random spam and a bunch of other things. On the 6th, Clark, one of Daniel's managers, called him to check on how he was holding up. This call is mostly uneventful, but Daniel reveals that he seems to be getting along alright with the other inmates, playing cards with them and everything. Daniel also mentions that he won't be told about when he's getting transferred. He says that he is in what he calls protected custody general population. Clark then tells Daniel that his mugshot and body cam footage quote-unquote blew up and that his mugshot is all over the internet. Other than these points, the call is quite uneventful. On the 12th, a snippet of a call between Daniel and Clark was uploaded by Flexburger. This short video reveals that the inmates are allegedly sharing Daniel's photoshopped images around via the jail iPads. These devices have internet access, and as such, inmates were able to pull images of Daniel off the web. Apparently, so, because of the uh, tablet things that they have here, where the video calls, yeah. it's got Wi-Fi. Of course, it's charged just like anything, right? Yeah, that's but fine. They do have, they do have tablets, and people are going around to sell to sell, showing all of my um, photoshopped, not even the real photos, but photoshopped photos of me. Are you, are you, are you serious? Yep. Jeez, so they, they... The ones that we are trying to have taken down are the ones that are being shown. So... Oh. I had to move, I actually had to move cells, and now I'm in a cell with two other people. On the 13th, Daniel was supposed to show up for court in Jefferson County. However, due to him being in Arapahoe, the court date was delayed to the 27th. On the 14th, Daniel appeared in court. His attorney revealed that he was diagnosed with a slew of mental disabilities, including autism and PTSD. The attorney also mentioned that Daniel's primary source of income was TikTok. The judge ordered a psych eval, and court was rescheduled for the 23rd of February. Later that same day, another jail call between Clark and Daniel was released. In this call, Daniel and Clark chat about various things. 
Notably, unlike the other calls between management and Dan, this one featured video. This was the last call Daniel made from Arapahoe County Jail before being transferred to Boulder. There you are, Daniel. Jeez, you're looking good. Yeah, so... So Bob's threatening the court to... They don't get you. Yeah, well, he's he, he's seventy years old. Yeah, you know, and he's acting like being seventy years old gives him the authority, and all it's doing is it's bringing down my life, and it it's is. like it's framing me is what it's doing. It's making you look worse than you. And right now, since you're sitting in jail, it's not the best situation. And in the end, he should be the one to bail me out because he's the one that's been giving me all my money. Exa and he's the one that didn't get you housing or anything, so he screwed up everything. Right. Here, try and see if you can turn your camera on. I want to see if you're doing good. I have to go back downstairs because it only the camera only works if it's connected to the wall. Yeah, so what I would do is I would talk to Tina and kind of go from there. Okay. I can do All that right. for you. I should go for now to save battery and to save money. Okay, yeah, smart. All right. And I will message you back. Okay. Stay safe. Hey, can you hear me? Yeah. Stay safe. Okay. Message Tina and Grace and see if they can bail me out. All right. Peace. Nothing of note happened until the 23rd, when yet another jail call from Clark was released by Flexburger. Notably, this is the longest call yet from the two, and it was also the last call before Daniel was released from jail. On March 29th, Reddit users u slash booty monster and u slash no flight were able to obtain the police body cam footage from the July 11th incident. This was when Daniel entered a Walmart in Lakewood, Colorado and had a massive meltdown in which he destroyed countless shelves of merchandise after the events of the dog arc finished. Until very recently, the body cam footage was considered lost media. However, due to the efforts of the previously mentioned individuals, the videos were recovered for everyone to see. In the footage, we can see that the shelves of the store have been decimated, with countless items scattered all over the floor. We also see that Daniel had smashed his head into a now-damaged rug doctor kiosk. Later on in the videos, we learn that Daniel had also attacked a bus with elderly citizens inside with a leash he had previously purchased for said dog. This was new, as Daniel had never disclosed the attacks he committed towards the bus, despite releasing countless other bits of information via his community tab. The windshield of said vehicle had a huge crack in it, and it was obvious that it was hit with much force. The police got witness statements from other individuals involved, and Daniel was sent off to the mental hospital to inevitably get released soon after. I got my dog dog, Matt. Just relax for me, okay? I got my dog dog. <laughs> And then I got attacked in the parking lot. <laughs> Alright, just relax. Just relax. We're gonna get figured out what's going on and then we can go from there, okay? Here, I don't wanna I don't wanna hurt your arm, so until we get figured out, we're just detaining you, alright? Alright, you can sit up. Just don't do anything stupid, alright? It looks like we've already got a bit of a mess. There's no reason for it to get worse, right? What's your name, Bob? It's Daniel. Daniel? Daniel, what's your last name? Larson. 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 Take a couple breaths for us. The only way we're going to be able to figure out what's going on is if you can calm down and tell us, all right? Yes. So you, you need to take a few breaths and get to where you can talk normal, all right? What's your birthday, bro? You want me to go talk to the bus driver, see what's up there? Sure. Okay. I think I got attacked in the parking lot. Alright, just relax. Oh.
We're gonna get figured out what's going on, and then we can go from there. Okay? Here, I don't want to. I don't want to hurt your arm. So. You want me to go talk to the bus driver? See what's up there. Sure. Okay. I'll start there. Okay. okay. Yeah, so I think it's like maroon shirt. She should be standing by the yeah, service desk. Yeah, I saw her coming in. She... <laughs> Daniel, we got the paramedics coming to check on you, okay? All right, what's going on today? So, I just I just bought a dog. Uh -huh. Adopted a dog two days ago. And I'm, I'm a singer-songwriter, and I got a massive internet fan base. Okay. And I just had some fan walk up to me. Over at the good times, um, I was sitting outside, <laughs> and just walked up on me. Okay. Um, I was giving my dog water um, because I was going to be staying at the Motel Six. They don't have a room yet. Okay. I was going to be staying at the Motel Six. I am currently homeless. Okay. So I don't have any money. Sure. Um, I pretty much spent all my money on the dog because okay. I was going to use it as a, um, as a guard dog uh -huh. for my popularity. Okay. And. This person who I guess has a background in, because she told me, um, drove up in the car, told me that she was a veterinarian, and just randomly grabbed my dog from me okay. on leash, and just immediately ran to the car while I was still sitting down. I grabbed my stuff by the time I got over to the car, just drove up. Okay. Um, with the dog. Okay. That I literally just spent all my money. Not all my money, but 99.9% .9 Sure. And I panicked because I just went to PetSmart and I bought $100 worth of stuff. Almost. And I mean, it might be a little bit I just don't have a lot of money because I'm homeless. Where's all your stuff at right now? All I know is it's. Uh, in the entryway, kind of just right okay. And I panicked. Um, I panicked because I'm homeless. Um, my popularity, I wanted to guard dog. And it just, I was, I just freaked out. Um, I tried to come over here for help. Um, over to Walmart. I was just panicked. And, um, is that why you were hitting yourself and, and all that's that? That's why I was hitting myself. Okay. Because I was panicked. Okay. Um, I didn't mean to do at all what I was doing. I okay. just came in <laughs> and just me uh, crying pretty much and just don't be hit. They told me to leave. I refused because I wanted to come in here and get, ask for help. Uh -huh. By that time, two people, two, two of the employees were just being overly aggressive, which freaked me out more. And I acted on here. Okay. Um, that's it. Basically. All right. Paramedics are here. We'll, uh, we'll talk a little more after they get a chance to talk to you. Speaking of releases, on March 1st, 2024, Daniel Larson was released from jail after having his probation reinstated during a court hearing. The day after his release, Daniel gets a new phone. He claims he was able to buy this new phone due to music distribution sales. The first thing that Daniel did with the device was, of course, to instantly create some new socials. This includes a new TikTok account and YouTube account. He immediately creates a community tab on his YouTube channel and begins rapidly posting to it. He updates his community, saying that he's on track to get an apartment, yet his debit card is locked due to him not using it because of his incarceration. On the third, Daniel's community tab revealed a few things. The first was that he watched Bob Marley One Love in theaters. He also states that he needs a haircut, as by this point his hair is shaggy and uneven in length due to the reverse mohawk incident. The third and most notable information was that Daniel was allegedly ripped in jail by an inmate he referred to as Sweet T. Much speculation is had about what exactly this meant, as Daniel is an extremely unreliable narrator. Many people theorized that Daniel was lying for attention and had made up the Sweet T name. Another theory is that something did happen, but the acts the two engaged in were fully consensual judging on some of Daniel's past of showing bisexual tendencies, notably in the shower video. Some others think that Daniel could have been telling the truth, but there aren't many who think this. Again, all of this is speculation, so please take it with a grain of salt. 
On the 4th, Daniel did a live stream in which he sat in silence and rode the bus. He would do many of these streams in the following days, with nothing of note happening in any of them except for various ramblings and the occasional flip of the camera to Daniel's face. We can see how much he's truly deteriorated in the screenshots people watching took of these streams. On the same day, Daniel also spends $40 on some pasta with chicken from Noodles & Company. On the 6th, Daniel is refused service by multiple restaurants. Many restaurants in Colorado at this point know who he is and are ready to refuse service on a dime. Daniel allegedly has the money to pay this time, but it's like the boy who cried wolf in this case. He's dined and dashed, too many times to be trusted. On the 9th, Daniel hosts a sleep stream. This one is quite different from most, however, as this one takes place inside of an actual motel room and you can actually see and hear Daniel moving around in this one. On top of that, the chat was quite active. However, Daniel is still quite far from figuring out what a sleep stream actually is supposed to look like. On the 10th, Daniel uploads a strange photo of himself shirtless to his community tab. The caption reads, Daniel Larson just got an addition for a commercial scheduled next week. Many speculated that the photo, which was uploaded multiple times that day, was possibly management getting Daniel to do adult content again. Speaking of management, a new manager would soon come into the mix. Dylan Clark, known by many nicknames such as MIA, Blark, and Mr. Interview, is a controversial figure in the Daniel Larson community. He was hated for a few reasons, the first being his financial enabling of Daniel. Dylan has given Daniel money and food before. He also altered the Daniel Larson wiki multiple times, giving false information to its readers. Third, and most disgustingly, Dylan called multiple schools affected by schools in the past and threatened them with Even nastier was the way he pretended to be relatives of individuals who had perpetrated these acts, such as Adam Lanza. He did this for multiple schools. The deed fortunately did not go unpunished, however, as police arrested him in his Sterling Heights home and he was sentenced. He was released soon after, though, and has been relatively quiet until the recent Larson management stuff. Keep Dylan in mind, as he's mentioned by Daniel frequently. On March 11th, Daniel hosts a live stream in which he is seen walking towards the 19th Street Mall for a fan meetup. This streams the usual silent walking until the view count drastically goes up. This prompts Daniel to notice this and address it as the views go up. It was later revealed that the stream was viewbotted. Who actually purchased the view botting is unknown, but the stream reached over 35,000 views. A YouTube channel for a viewbot company commented on the channel saying, quote unquote, Welcome back, confirming that the stream was indeed filled with bots. On the 12th, Daniel receives an envelope from what appears to be Interscope Records. Daniel claims that it was his first paycheck from the label for his music sales. However, this fake letter contained $5 and a welcome letter from Fake Grace and Fake Tina. The alleged reason that there was only $5 and not a full paycheck inside was due to Grace supposedly needing to show some form of financial compensation towards Daniel to confirm some stuff with fake Interscope. On the 14th, Daniel went live on an RTD bus. He briefly pans the camera to himself. We can see that he is looking extremely tired as if he hasn't slept in days. This is possible due to the fact that Daniel has alluded to having a very poor sleep schedule as a result of being homeless. Nothing noteworthy happened until the 17th. Daniel posted to his socials that someone was impersonating the previously mentioned Dylan Clark. He posted a collage of proof for the impersonations, which turned out not to be real. He also was seemingly convinced that fake college was real. He claims to have found pictures of quote-unquote actual human skulls the size of dinosaurs. We never see these images. Daniel later announced a fan meetup at Pearl Street Mall. While there, he was allegedly attacked. After the meetup, he goes live to explain what happened. Some middle schooler. So there was a middle schooler that showed up at the fan meetup. Told me he had $20 to take a picture. I looked at him, saw how old he was, and I was like, I don't believe you. That's what I was thinking in my mind. So I turned down the photo, okay, and I keep on walking, okay. At that point, he starts following me. Around that time, there were two other people um, 
because I was down at the Boulder County Library. There was two other people down on Pearl Street Mall that come up to me. And one of them was carrying a cup of what looked to be soda and tried to pour it on me again. And at that point, I started running. And now I'm not even sure where I am. It's not fair when you guys take pictures behind my back and then post it to the media and don't pay me because then I have security issues I have to deal with. And Grace, I am about to be pissed off at you. Later, Daniel was hanging out with fans, and an individual who he was with poured water on him, telling him to look away. Many fans joked about this being the first shower Dan's had in forever. Oh my God. <laughs> no. On the 18th, Daniel was staying at the homeless shelter. However, Dylan Clark showed up to the shelter for unknown reasons and ended up causing an altercation that resulted in Daniel getting banned from the homeless shelter for 45 days. What exactly happened is unknown, but the incident was allegedly physical. Later on, Daniel goes to the probation office to inform his probation officer about the incident. The next day, Daniel is arrested on another fugitive of justice warrant. Many people again thought that Daniel was done for, but this wasn't the case again. Many skeptics who believed Daniel would be punished properly this time even labeled this as the second jail arc. Said second jail arc didn't even last two days, with Daniel being released on the 21st after a court hearing. The 22nd saw Daniel get four bags of groceries thanks to Boulder County probation. Only problem with being a homeless celebrity is that he didn't have a way to heat up his food, of course. On the 23rd, Daniel had a meltdown on TikTok Live in which he was running away from some teenagers who were following him, hitting himself, and making threats to the FBI. You can hear him out of breath whilst running. Daniel's threats got the stream shut down by TikTok. This incident actually got his TikTok account permanently shut down as well. Fortunately, the stream was screen recorded and archived. Here is the incident.
the FBI can go ahead and press legal charges on me. I will just... I'm being chased by a group of about 10, 10 teenagers that go to CU University. The same, well, one of the groups that um, attacked me a couple of days ago. They're trying to... These past two months have been absolutely rough for Daniel. We started off with his incarceration in Arapahoe County to his subsequent release a month later. Whether he lied or not about the incident with Sweet Tea is very much up for debate. But whatever actually happened, we may never know. Daniel also had a second, albeit very short, jail arc after being doused in a bottle of water following a fan meetup. We really thought he couldn't get any worse, but every episode, we see that this hole is miles deeper than we could have ever anticipated. Daniel Larson is a constantly evolving situation that only continues to get more complicated as time goes on. Hey everyone, this is, of course, Jetterplane TV. You've made it to the end of this episode. As you may have noticed, my production quality has gone up significantly and my mic quality has also increased. It's been fixed. <laughs> As many of you have commented saying that it wasn't great, so I was like, you know what, what what's wrong with this mic? So, I, I fixed it. You're welcome. You know, none of this would have been possible without your guys' continued support. Like, all of you who watch this and enjoy my content are amazing, and I seriously appreciate you coming back every time a new episode of this is released. It means a lot to me, and I, I seriously enjoy entertaining you guys. Please like and subscribe, guys. Also, please, it really helps me a lot. Also, please comment. I do read all of my comments, and if you haven't received a heart, YouTube likely blocked your comment. Just try again with different wording, and I'll see it and respond to questions. Again, thanks so much for watching my channel and everything. With that, peace.